Select Board. It is uh, Monday, January 9th, 2019. We've got a full board and uh, Cheryl Katrina and well, one guest. So let's uh, go ahead and start off with our first. <laughs> <laughs> I will be quick. I just have a couple questions on behalf of the library. Okay. As we're getting ready, uh, time to use the first really quick. Yes. Um, so you'd asked us to put together a presentation. Yep. And we are wondering, are we doing it at pre-town meeting, town meeting? Both. Both. Both, if we could, yeah. Okay. How long do you want it to be? We could go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on time between uh, when the meeting ends and lunch. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. What do you think would be appropriate? I mean, I mean, is a good, well-informed uh, presentation without putting people to sleep, you know, and just right. getting too didactic. And too. Well, I guess that brings up a, a question of what content do you want us to cover? You said you want a budget and kind of sketches. So we have a couple of design night plan, design nights planned. Um, we can talk about the community engagement we've done and what we've heard from people who've done focus groups and surveys. I think that's very important. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want us to cover? I don't think so. I think there'll be a lot of questions as well. Right. What there'll be more discussion. Um, there'll be more discussion. Uh, you know, what is this? Why are we doing it? What you know? What are the benefits? What are the, uh, those type of things? And um, and we'll be putting on the, the presentation. But some of that stuff, I'm sure, we'll have some some answers to as well. You mm -hmm. know. But yeah, I think those are the things that we would be, you know, people are interested to find out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, on the survey, I would like to hear in addition to what people said, numbers. Mm -hmm. So if we can quantify the survey. You've got that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, will there be a projector on the screen? I mean, we're, I'm thinking like a power point. Yeah, no, I think that would be most effective. Um, we have in the past, we can figure something out. Okay. I have, um, yeah, I actually, in fact, I have a projector and a screen that I use for presentations. We have it, we can give you. Okay. Just put it okay, that would be great. Um, we would like to request that we're not in other business at the end of the agenda when everyone is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I'm not sure how that is statue and where things, you know, uh, um, and where is this, do you know on that, Cheryl, how that would fall? At, at town meeting or? Yeah, no, at the pre-town meeting, pre meeting, pre meeting we can do what we want. <laughs> pre-town pre meeting we can do what we want. That's my, or our agenda. Right. But um, town meeting more it falls. Yeah, you can have, you can ask them to introduce at any time. Yeah. All right. It's not really an article that they're talking about. It's non binding. It's just informational. All right. So, you know what? Maybe what we'll do is when we have, uh, and usually the, the local reps come in, mm -hmm. uh, Maxine and, yeah. you know, our new one. Um, yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> when they come and speak, uh, you know what? Maybe that's when I'll introduce you or bring you guys up. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think it's, it's really up to the moderator, too. So, mm -hmm. right, we'll speak with Steve. Yeah, we'll speak with Steve for what our wishes mm -hmm. are. And Steve usually goes along. Okay, great. Um, I have one other thing, which is that uh, the Sculpture School and Green Mountain Valley School approached us and offered to make some furniture for us. And we were thinking of using that, it's totally free. Um, Corey started a read and play program at the town hall, and we were thinking we might use it for that. And I wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we wouldn't be, that that would be okay with everyone. Um, how big is it? Well, we don't know. We haven't <laughs> defined the scope of it, but we could make it something that, you know, I'm, it's for kids, so I'm thinking like a toy chest or a little chairs and table or something, but it could be something that we would leave in the town hall, and if we have an event coming up and we need to pull it out, we can. So nothing right. huge. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we have a problem. You know, when you get the plans, if they 
if you see something, you say, oh my God, then come back and <laughs> talk with us. Okay. But, you know, let's, I think we can always come. They're going to probably look at the space and talk to Corey so, you know, she can tell them the scope of what we'd be looking right. for. But just want to make sure that wouldn't be a problem. Did you say sculpture school is what? It's the Green Mountain Valley School. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Free custom library furniture. So we're doing a, a project. And we're a client. That's awesome. Well, that's okay. yeah. All right, that's hey, it. Great. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. Absolutely appreciate that. Do you need me to sign in somewhere? No, I got you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. As I don't see any other public comment, I'll, um, and Martin is not here. Um, what do you guys think? Should we bring uh, Cheryl in here? Do you want to start with her? Um, yeah, Cheryl, why don't you um, <clears throat> roll on up? Let's take a look at Cheryl in the budget. Does everyone have the latest budget printed today, 1-7? Gas job 
going to be around 37 to 40 grand diesel, basically 10 grand more. I don't see the um, need for a diesel. I'm just not going to get the life expectancy out of it to get the, mm -hmm. the benefit the of that diesel. Yeah. 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 Um, so I would recommend going with the gas um, build. I haven't picked a make or manufacturer, just get rough estimates and we'll wanted to get an article before I did a lot of light work, but I think with um, the big question mark is what we're going to do for equipment. Um, Stuart did get into the pickup that we have now relatively cheaply at the time that he did. It uh, hasn't been a perfect fit for us by any means. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't best fit our needs, but it was an inexpensive um, unit. Um, I would ideally like to have a um, one ton dump with a tailgate sander. Um, that would allow us some flexibility in the winter to actually have a pickup. Um, so we can dump the sand or salt off and we still have a pickup body that we can use as well as a, a, a small dump truck to use and we'd be able to get a little bit more material on that. However, that does boost the price up. Um, the ballpark figure is going to be 25 to 30 for the equipment. Um, so we're looking at 70,000 probably to get into it. That's come down a little bit depending on trade, so I haven't gotten any um, mm -hmm. warm and fuzzies from anybody in the trade. Well, we'll get to one. <laughs> that does not work very much. Today, but yeah. <clears throat> but we'll uh, you know, deal with that when we choose a uh, manufacturer and either force their hand into a dollar amount for selling that product or the, the board decides. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. So I think. We could probably shave seven to nine thousand off of that by maybe going with another poly uh, caster and a, uh, another plow. Um, I wouldn't want to keep the poly caster we have now simply because all the electric components are um, very weak at this point. The, the uh, drive motor is weak, the spinner motor is weak. The, all those components are pretty much wore out at this point. It just—it was a, almost bomb-proof for four to four and a half years, and the last three have been borderline nightmarish. So, on the electronics part, so that's kind of why I would like to stay away from that uh, side of things. But so I think seventy to seventy-two thousand, maybe to be safe. Um, obviously, we come in lower than that. That's great, uh, but that's where it looks for like, what we're looking at. <clears throat> so, would this be a uh, one and a half ton chassis with a, uh, a dump? This would be just a regular one ton dump. It wouldn't one be. A, yeah, the the Ford does make the five fifty. I haven't been able to get a quote from Ford yet, so. Actually, I uh, did some delegating. Uh, and Sean and Rodney did some calling around to get these figures, and um, they both contacted the Ford dealership. And as of today, they hadn't gotten back to us yet. So, uh, we'll still, I still want to get a quote from Ford because I think they may be the cheapest for the best truck. But, but does it GMC makes a ton and a half truck, don't they? The 3,500? Yeah. Or is that, no. Yeah. It's a one no, it's a, I believe that's a one ton. Oh, yeah. uh, International that now makes the, uh, the, the, the Chevy International combo, but that price tag was closer to 100 grand, so it's... I think Dodge yeah. has a 5,500. Yeah, so Dodge has it. one. Um, What's the advantage of the one and a half ton? Just extra uh, suspension carrying capacity. Um, mm -hmm. How useful is that to you? It would be useful. Again, I, it, I think we need to be cautious about how long we're planning on keeping this. I think the, the best intention is to have a rotation plan and stick to it. Mm -hmm. um, this pickup has been a great asset to the town. 
but it has cost us some money here in the last few years. How long have we had that? The 2011. Mm -hmm. And do you think this one uh, um, might I wear think, a little bit better? I, I think we could expect to get seven to eight years out of it. <coughs> Six might be the safer bet, just to keep a trade-in value possibly on it. But yeah, the, the first two to three years of this truck lifespan, it wasn't undercoated. It maybe wasn't taken care of as well as it could have been. Just drop. Uh, it would you know, because someone else put on it. Um, but so yeah, I think there's mm -hmm. things that can be done to help with that. Mm -hmm. But it you know, solve all these wins. So. All right, but it's um. Any other questions on that, from Aaron? Um, there is a maintenance schedule in place now, though, that would extend the life of a truck, probably, compared to what that one had. Um, the only thing that we would have implement now would be undercoatings mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, periodic washing. But, yeah, the undercoating would be a, a big service in the first three years because you're, mm -hmm. you're going to get your most bang for your buck and when it's the cleanest before the rust is right. taking hold. Um, so other than that, then the kind of status quo, you know, going to be washed periodically. Um, this pickup was by design had a poly hopper, so the way it was loaded, there was a lot of salt getting between the body and, mm -hmm. and the cab of the truck. Um, with this if we did get a one-ton dump, it would have a headboard that would catch that, mm -hmm. that would keep that salt from being trapped in into the frame and of the truck and whatnot. So I think, yeah, there would be some benefits to that that could extend the life of it. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. saying I, I wouldn't want to say that we're going to get eight years out of this truck mm -hmm. because I think it could be a mistake to push it mm -hmm. that long. I think it would just cost us money in the long. All right, we'll look at that um, and decide on, I mean, that's, that we'll probably go that way. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to eat dumb money. I just know from my experience that people overload them. Oh, yeah. Like, so if you yeah. can maintain not overloading them, right. they'll last a long time. Right. But they get a one-ton truck and they think it's a three-ton truck. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And they put asphalt on and that's... They load it right up, you know, because they want to make that one trip. They yeah. want to make two. Right. And so, but, you know, I, I trust you. Yeah, we do it with Canada, too. So. <laughs> uh, don't tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Nature of the beast. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other business as far as um, the pickup or, or like, actually? Oh, no, no. The only other thing I had was... The grader, um, I didn't know where the board was on the budget. Um, ideally, <laughs> if we're going to repair the grader, I'd love to get it sent out the next couple of weeks so that that repair could be taking place when we hopefully won't need the grader and we would have it back in time for mud season or pushing stone things back. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a big ticket up item. Um, How much? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, the main reason is for that uh, leaking candle seal, um, that was a $14,000 repair, the rest of it is basically, may or may not be um, billable, but we put it in there for checking turbo, injectors, uh, fuel pump, components in the front end, basically an mm -hmm. A1 inspection of the grader, what they have here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could easily be, you know, 18 grand and we're very lucky, mm -hmm. or maybe it ends up being 30 and we're not. You know, it's right. really hard to tell with those things, but um, like I said, ideally I would get it sent down uh, sooner than later so the repair could be happening. Well, we're not using it. Well, we should know that tonight. The other question, what about the excavator? And we're putting, allocating 10,000. 
on that. Yeah. You think that's... I, I just think <laughs> that's basically the way I'm looking at that is a one month rental for a machine and a, and a final drive repair on the other side that we didn't do last year. So, you know, I mean, I think that's what we've got to do. If, we, if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen, but... We need that. That's how it is. Yeah. No. I mean, we could certainly less either take some of that away, but we're definitely rolling the dice. Well, the uh, <coughs> the uh, large increase in the gas, diesel, oil, the thought diesel was actually going down. Um, we went over budget this year. My reasoning was with Stephanie going full time, there would be actually probably more hauling and more equipment use, so the fuel budget would continue to go up. And I, the, the forecast that I had heard when at the time of the budget was that the fuel prices were going up. They have since seemed to be heading in the other direction, but at the time that it did my budget, which was mm -hmm. October, November, the forecasts were for uh, fuel prices to skyrocket, I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why the gravel usage in the actuals is doing so much? Um, basically, because it's the only line item that I could really rob from. <laughs> so I'll be here to take all. So not yeah. using as much as we would want to. Correct. Yeah. There's a sand we need. You, you yeah. You can cheat that. You can cheat the road. I'd love to to put it all down, but it's not a lot of work to do here. So, uh, speaking on the sand, so uh, the price in your budget, does that include the trucking of the sand? Yes, that will include the, if the pricing stays relatively the same, yeah. that will, that included the 4,000 yards that was trucked in okay. course this year, so, which I understood was what we were going to continue to do as long as we got the favorable pricing. I think so. I think, I think that oh, yeah. I mean, no a lot of all stuff, we should, yeah. we should be hiring it out. If I really yeah. Think so. <clears throat> all right. Anything else on the budget? Maybe it would be good. I talked about this. I heard about it in um, the budgeting workshop that I went to. Waitsfield was talking about how they did like an open house, so they would invite town people in so they can see what the bank looks like. Check out some of the other stuff. And the people kid friendly, they can sit in the plow trucks. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of, so people can go in and see. Another time I did that, they needed actually a bigger garage. And it took them like half an hour to move all their stuff out to get it back in. And they actually videotaped it and put it out there so that people could see it. So if you see something and you understand it more, you can say, like, I understand why, instead of being like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm open to any suggestions like that. I think even if that's um, where you benefit, I mean, certainly not on this truck idea, but right. with, the, with the more fest when you have all your stuff out, yeah. and that's kind of our open house with getting people sure. involved yeah. and showing what we have. But, all right. Um, is, is, long as, are you guys done with the budget with Martin? Uh, a couple other really quick questions. Sure. Do you plan on keeping the old pickup, keep mileage off, do the trade-in is bad? It's an option, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we have, yeah, we have to wait and see what we mm -hmm. get for trade-in mm -hmm. uh, dollars. Uh, and then I guess the only other choice would be an outright sale, which is, would be a crap shoot, really. Um, I think when you get to that point, what right, you want to do well, is get it. Get the best price for the truck, you know, whatever right. truck we're looking. And then just ask them to give you a cash value. What 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 would you pay for the truck? Right. Uh, actual cash value. Yeah, yeah. mill, not a trade in because you'll see thousands of dollars. Oh, I yeah. just want the cash value of the truck. Right. Yeah. What am I mean, buying for the truck? 
ideally no because the mileage isn't what's hurting the truck you know it's, mm -hmm. it's really not it's not the mileage that is no, high on this truck it's just the wear and tear right it's wrong mm -hmm. you know they're all when you get to that eight mm -hmm. and then they're worth a few thousand dollars no matter what they are mm -hmm. i mean it's other thing I had was um, Sean had mentioned a couple of times he plows for a road. Um, Frank's hedge is still an issue. He's almost been collected there a couple of times this winter. Just you can't see when he plows, you know, 12 feet in front of his <coughs> truck. So he's basically in the street before you can even begin to see vehicles coming. So for safety wise, something needs to be done there. I mean, we've Mm -hmm. I've tried to work with Frank in the past on that, I think. Yeah, yeah. And he has Frank not. A couple hit, you know, branches. Right. But that's all in the town right away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there any way to put a convex mirror on the other side of the road? Uh, no. Probably with the state permission. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the uh, brush is in the town right away? It's a, right. it's a cedar hedge. The cedar hedge, yeah. so. Yeah. So it's basically, you can't see through it. It's well, a head you know, they, so. We've talked about it before, right? Yeah, really has right. Not he, he hasn't done anything. He's so we need to kind of thumbed, uh, you know, put his finger up to us. It's not yeah, saying that we should take out, you know, just cut, feet cut, it, but. cut what you think you need to cut. Yeah. And just do it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. no, I mean we've we need worked to see with him you. long enough and trying to work with him, and he has not done anything. So just cut what you need to cut. Mm -hmm. Let him know first, but right. not as a question. Yeah, we can just let him know. That, mm -hmm. Okay. I'll reach out to him first, I guess, before we do anything. And then if he gets too heated, I'll direct it to the board. Thank you. I'm doing the right of way. Yeah. Yeah. The same. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So the other thing I did want to bring up, and I'm glad actually our, our school people are here, um, is whatever happened at the incident at the school with the plow. Um, so Linda, Gabe, if you want to kind of open your ears just a bit as we're talking about this, there was a, an incident recently, um, I believe it was in mid to early December. No, it's November. November. Yeah, I don't big, really know. A big storm, right? November, yeah. Sometime in November. Um, well, something from, we, we got a bill. When was the bill? We did we bill. Again, we got bill. a call from Ray Daigle. That's how we found out about it. And then it's saying that there was going to be an invoice coming to fix two columns that um, were damaged during um, road crew plowing. Snowballing. Snowballing, snow right? Snow removal, whatever. So, can you share with what you know about this? Well, uh, you guys knew about it at the same time I did because I didn't know anything about it until Cheryl or mm -hmm. Katrina copied me on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I asked Steph and he knew nothing about it. I came up, uh, I don't know if I did it that exact day, but I came up and looked at the damage. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I just don't see how he would have done it with, you know, where the, he would have had to been sitting with the tractor and everything to do it. Um, talked to Greg at that point, and he was like, well, yeah, I was like, well, is there a reason that it's a month, you know, down the road that we're finding out about this? And he's like, yeah, that's my fault. So basically, long and short, I said, well, I said, I can't prove we didn't do it, but there's, you know, cameras on the building. Do they show, you no know, there? And he's like, oh, I don't know if they shot that far. I said, well, maybe we should check, you know. Um, like I said, I can't prove that he didn't do it, but I do know I've seen teachers backed up to that door. I've seen Greg backed up to that door. I've seen, you know, numerous vehicles backed up to that entry entranceway, so it's just as likely that a teacher backed into it or, a, you know, so I just find the whole thing somewhat suspicious that it would, you know, we wouldn't hear a thing about it until 
a month a later. Month. That's why I said December. That's why I saw the emails were coming in mid December. Right. Really weird. weird to me. Or that's that one that told you that it happened. He would have seen it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Stefan's definitely not perfect, but he has never tried to hide anything that he's done, ever. So, I mean, I think if he had done it, he would have told me that, that the minute that he did it. Right. He's, a kind of, yeah. he's pretty self-conscious. He's not so, going to try to hide from something yeah. like that. So just, so that's where we're at. I'm just hearing, I was here at our last meeting. So today I went over to the school. I tried to get an appointment with the principal there. I want to try to figure this out. Um, but should we, I mean... I mean, what, what, is, what is your advice on this game, or Linda, uh, as far as how this should be handled? I'm not sure. It's not a matter that was brought to the school board's attention. Um, what was it that was, that was said to be damaged? Uh, if you go over there, in fact, there's a couple pictures here. There's the, the columns that... Um, on the front entryway, the front there's those wooden side columns. Yeah, and those are five vehicles. One of them on the right hand side of the door if you're going in. Okay. You'll see it at the bottom. There's okay. like a little piece that's not attached anymore. Yeah, what was raised estimated cost? Eleven hundred. We go to school every day and we didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually fighting with two small children on the Here you go. I mean they went ahead and got a got a quote. Before they even know. We've had no trouble turning up video uh, tape in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I moved the door thing pointed like directly out. Yeah. Yeah, see where the rug is, where your hand is, Linda? So yeah. That's like the entry. Okay. Yeah. So it's to the right of the double doors. Yeah. Okay. So would the best idea be to talk with Mandy, the principal, first? Yeah, well, that's what I'm going to try to do and then request the. Um, the video from that. Right. But I'm a little concerned that Ray Daigle would send us an estimate for eleven or twelve hundred dollars, whatever it was. Well you can look at the, the emails are in there as well. Um you know without really talking to us about it. And I'm saying that an invoice would be followed. Right. Followed, so but without ever having right any kind of evidence yeah. or when mm -hmm. letting us know so it could be inspected. You know, it when it had to be exactly so. I inspected the column. I saw no yellow paint from our snow blower front. You know, no. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying there's no way for me to prove that he didn't do it. Um, I just don't see how it was possible. There was a huge mound of frozen snow that would have made it impossible for him to get to that point. But again, being a month, month and a half ago, I don't know if it was still, if it was there at that time or if it wasn't or not. So I don't, we just don't know. Hmm. But like I said, I have seen teachers' rigs backed up to that door, uh, or Greg's rigs backed up to that door. Um, so. And I don't have a lot of faith, quite frankly, in Greg's word based on his he was double dipping us with his mowing, uh, charging us for uh, hours and he was charging the school this past summer that we caught. So I don't have a lot of faith in the man. So, and no one actually saw it happen either. That's, yeah. Well, it's, I guess, uh, <laughs> well, the town's responsibility for it, I guess, is ultimately up to you guys and the town attorney. I mean, typically, if one is claiming damage, you want to have some evidence that the damage would cause the person's getting a pill. But I mean, that's a, there are video cameras all over that school uh, in order to resolve issues just like this one. And so I think it would have been what they record um, would have to think as a public record as well. So, um, a sensible way to get at it. I mean, they know roughly the date of the. Well, Greg's, yeah, he said he was there doing it. He has his, his date, so yeah, I would. Uh, he said he saw Stefan. Or actually, yeah. <laughs> he turned around and it was done when Stefan was there, so. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, if any, I mean, if any part of that building has a video camera on, it's the front door. Yeah. So I think yeah. um, this ought to be easily resolved. Um, unfortunately, that's all. Yeah, no good. I just wanted, and I'm glad you were here so you know, so we'll keep you informed. But I will try. That would be helpful. Um, again, I'll go over with, um, there tomorrow. They suggest you to stop in or 
sent her an email. She wasn't in this afternoon. Um, we'll start there, and then you know we'll, we'll keep you informed of. Okay. Uh, I mean, we do. I think I speak for everybody. We we appreciate your partnership in maintaining that piece of territory, which has always kind of had a funny overlap over just the, over yeah. the building. You guys have been really terrific about assisting us with snow removal, and I think we don't want any uh, bad feelings among uh, you know, with the town. It's really historic and very helpful. Uh, so let us know how it turns out. I guess. Um, yeah. We could, you know, notion you and I could ask the board to vote to ask to have the video <laughs> but I mean, the truth is that isn't let's good. start let's start yeah, right I here. Think I think she'll be fine. I mean I don't she may not even know I don't know what Mandy's uh, knowledge of it, the whole incident is, but it's just and it's maybe something we should have hopped on earlier, but you know what, we're you know, we're volunteer board that gets together a couple times a month. Sure, sure. Um, so Okay. Well hopefully that there's some film out there that will resolve this uh, caper. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. I did, and that's a great place to start, as a mandate. Yeah. 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 And it has not come before. Yeah. All right. Thanks for letting us know. Yep. We'll, we'll be right with you. I appreciate you guys coming. Um, yeah, another very quick one. Um, I don't know how the rest of the board feels on this, but if you're in a position where you have to not put down the gravel you'd like to put down because you go over, you can come in and talk about it. Yeah, yeah because we might rather you do. Right. It's something, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they have the time to do it, then well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes that other money is <laughs> right. doing other mm -hmm. things at another time, but yeah, if there's. As we just talked earlier, we have uh, the infrastructure as a town, so right. that's what we're trying to maintain. We need to put a little bit money into that. That's I'll be good. Good to you. Anything else for Martin? Anybody? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sure. I was wondering, Martin, if you uh, had already talked to some of the board about the safety concerns for Town Loving Lane. Or... Um, I haven't. The way Sean has reiterated to me, I guess it's been um, very uncluttered up there lately. So I think it's been nice. dealt with. Uh, we've been having issues with the parking on Lover's Lane uh, again. Um, I live down there. Oh, it was last week. The days all run together, I don't know. But standing in there was. Long story, I had to go down and get an electrician who was on the phone and just completely ignored me and started walking away at when he knew what I needed from him. And um, I just was not very pleasant with him, but he just totally disrespect the fact of what we were trying to do and the fact that he just felt like he'd park anywhere. So I contacted the uh, Basically, I think the designer, probably the super of the whole thing, and they have apologized prophetically, but that's not the first time they've done that either. So, we'll keep next time, just here. call the police and then let them know you want the cars totally. Okay, okay. no more. You've met with them, yeah. you've been Hold down them there, we've sent letters. We've sent letters. So. It's, a, it's a safety issue. Yeah. Don't dick around with it one more time. Call the state police. Tell them you want those cars towed immediately. Don't go down to the site. Don't do anything. I'm sick of it. Done. Is that clear? Yeah. And not with you. I'm not. I yeah. just know. <laughs> so I don't. Yeah. No, I think we're all in agreement on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We've yeah. talked about that several times. We'll do. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can come here if they have an issue. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Well, thank you. Thanks, Martin. Feel better. Mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Dave and Linda. As promised, we thought it would be good to come and just check in. And, oh, you're welcome. And we're hoping to do this every quarter. So good. that we can update you on what's happened with Harwood and answer any questions that you may have um, for us. So. Okay. As you can imagine, we're busy in the budget season right now. And so just looking at all of our options, um, 
we've also had a pretty, very thorough look at 10 years of um, birth population for the district to look at the elementary schools going forward. And that information is really helpful as well um, to get an idea of where we'll stand Just in 2028. Yeah, where, I mean, the, kind of that 30 that uh, foot view on that. Where, is, where are, you, what are you looking at? So at this point, if you look at the, at the data, which I'll be honest, I'm a total data geek, so <laughs> it's, it's my area. Um, when, you, when you look at it, um, Thatcher Brook is number one as far as total numbers in elementary. Moortown Elementary is second. Um, I believe Waitsfield is third, Warren is fourth, and Faiston is in last yeah. as far as the the school population numbers. And these figures are run through a series of statistical analysis to kind of account for children moving in, families moving out, um, but is really based off of the birth population. And I quite honestly went back and looked at the, you know, because I have access to the health department's public mm -hmm. data on births. And so I went back and looked at it and just compared it to what I was seeing. And it's, I'd say it's pretty accurate. As in anything, it can only be accurate for you know, as a, as much as we know about the birth population right now. So I thought you would find that interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. And then, um, Gabe, any other comments on that? No, I mean, it's interesting and it's sort of a phenomenon, I think, that's being seen statewide where we're just on the edge where Morton seems to ride the demographic coattails of the Burlington Affiliate Corridor, which is doing well while the rural areas of the state are really suffering. Um, and I, this is sort of a microcosm of that. You see Waterford really booming after the flood, in part because it's an attractive area in Burlington, and Morton as well on that end. And I think as you get further deep into the valley and it becomes less easy to commute, you're seeing the demographics take a harder turn. Um, but, uh, and, you know, I think the residential development that has occurred here recently has been really beneficial to the town in terms of um, attracting younger families and, and children. So that's, um, you know, I think you played your cards as well as you could as a, as a board in terms of making this place um, attractive for development. So. Yeah, I think John and I got together this weekend. We were looking at the budgets, but talking about just that. As far as uh, Johnson, there was an increase in the, the for or the or maybe it was, it was huge. Yeah, it's three preschools now, three preschool classes. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. More yes. Town. And one, you know, so the question: Why? You know, mm -hmm. they, what? Why are we doing that? And I think like you said the proximity. Uh, we were, uh, you know, at friends and face it. You know, it takes them a half an hour to get from there to the interstate. Right. Here you do it in seven minutes. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, exactly. You know. If you watch the quarter coming back from Burlington at night, which I do, you know, it is so busy and, you know, it, it makes sense. Waterbury is busting at the seams, so it feels like the next community out is more comments. You know, I think we are starting to see some of those positives happening. Yeah, yeah well, we have a great community here, and if we can continue to maintain that, that's, that's the challenge that is in front of us all. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting times, and then I mean, the birth rate kind of follows the business cycle a little bit, too. You know, we've got some more children in good times, and, um, so, but it's hard. We're, I mean, we're lucky in some ways that we are benefiting a little bit from the kind of urbanization trend um, that we're facing across the country, but um, we're right on the ball. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, as it, we mentioned, um, we're working on budgets right now and trying to figure out, um, you know, one of the challenges we have facing us is the per pupil student rate um, because we are in the top 80 percent um, as far as the per pupil rate. And um, at some point, there could be some um, issues that arise if we go too high. So we're looking at all of the options. Um, you probably heard that we had looked at, you know, what would it be to do. Um, keep the tax rate at the same level it is right now. And, and that really hits the core of you know, teachers and programs. And um, so at this point, um, our, we have several committees going. We have an asset management committee. We have a vision committee. And we're really you know, talking about looking at you know, district-wide planning, because I think one of the reasons why the middle school 
um, proposal uh, didn't move forward for a bond vote was because we don't know what we're doing in the district. So if we're making a decision based on just, you know, middle mm -hmm. school, you know, not just middle school, but while it's, it's extremely important, we really need to have um, a vision for the entire district before we can move forward mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, come to the voters with a legitimate plan that says we're being fiscally responsible. You know, we've looked at everything. We've looked at the data. We've looked at the qualitative sides side of how important um, schools are to the communities and what can we do to make sure going forward that we can afford our schools and that we are doing due diligence. Mm -hmm. Couple of questions. Did you mean we're in the top 20%? Sorry, I meant yeah. yes, top 20%. Okay. Yes, so. And um, can you describe where we stand as far as class sizes? I think that varies, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, it varies by school and grade, and we have you know this demographic dip right now going into where does it start? It's like right in the middle of the mm -hmm. student population, you know, kind of fat on the ends. Um, but because of that, it's going to be a problem for some time. I think um, I'm reluctant to look. Real, I mean, in some ways, I think class size is sort of a diversion. The interesting thing is FTEs per student, whether they're teachers or what. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm more interested in looking at that. I think if we can have small class sizes and cut costs, that's all for the good. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I, obviously, at some point, those two will come opposed. But mm -hmm. I would rather make sure that we're spending yeah. money on yeah. teaching. Not, not to get into a long discussion on mm -hmm. that, but isn't there an optimum class size below which you don't want to fall? And it's different for grade level? Yeah, it depends who you ask. I mean, the, mm -hmm. but there is, I don't think anybody disagrees that it is easier to have a large lecture style high school class than it is to have a large lecture style kindergarten. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I do. So, I mean, there, yes. yes, as children get older, it becomes possible mm -hmm. to educate them responsibly in larger groups. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there are plenty of challenges there. I think it is something we have to, we have to look at. I don't know. You know, I think we need to be careful to make sure that there are actual savings where we think that there are savings. I think as you look at merged districts, um, many of them are not achieving the economies yeah. that they were expected to achieve, mm -hmm. in part because many of the administrative efficiencies were already achieved. There was already mm -hmm. centralized purchasing, there was already centralized management of special education. Um, so I think we want to make sure before we do anything that whatever savings are actually empirically supported and not just kind of political speculation speculation mm -hmm. by folks who want to be seen to be doing something. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, um, you know, I think that's the task. Um, but we do need to talk seriously about, you know, making optimal use of the resources we have. Right. Um, but, we're, you know, at the elementary level on this end of the valley, we're not seeing uh, falling populations anymore. We're seeing mm -hmm. uh, competition for space. Um, but, um, the, you know, the good news about the current budget, and we're still early in it, is that there really aren't any shocks. You know, the bottom didn't fall out of anything. Mm -hmm. We're looking at probably a three cent increase in the tax rate, which is about 2%. Um, that is, you know, pretty good. Where we're getting hurt is, I think, the latest projection we got. And two cents of that is just lost um, at 46 cents. So you're really yeah. not so in yeah. shape. So where we're getting hurt is the equalized pupil count is done, you know, what really matters to your tax rate is not your actual education mm -hmm. spending, it's your spending for equalized people, and equalized people itself is a kind of fictitious number mm -hmm. that's adjusted behind closed doors using some kind of magic <laughs> according to what. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, everybody just waits, and we were at the last board meeting, we're still, you know, our finance director is terrific at saying, well, I'm just waiting here, you know, we don't know. But we did wind up, I think, if I understood correctly, what we got in our most recent projection, we're looking at something like a 2% increase in actual education spending that on paper turns into a five point something increase in, in spending for equalized pupil because of the loss of equalized pupils. Uh -huh. And, you know, without insight into that, how that is calculated, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, um, so, but that's a state level political mm -hmm. problem that we're mm -hmm. not going to solve. We'll just get the number. CLA came out, as you probably saw. Um, again, there was some shock. Um, but so there's nothing um, stunning or drastic happening, mm -hmm. um, but we're in the same predicament we are. Uh, 
Yep. Where the costs are high and it's kind of for people is, is higher than the budget that they And we've really looked at every avenue for where we could, could save money. And as Gabe mentioned earlier, some things that you think should, you should be able to save more or not when you actually calculate it out. So. Mm -hmm. You're even looking at retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Which will retire some of Yes. Which will be beneficial to some of the long time teachers, but it will also bring in new new jobs into the community. Is that part of the plan? With with some it is, um, for example, there's a there's a question right now about what if the math teachers retiring, so through attrition. I think there were like yeah. four there are four, and I think they, uh, and after our last board meeting, it was going to be opened up to a few more, so I think we'll have more information this week as far as, um, at the next board meeting, as far as um, retirements. We did the most recent meeting, we voted to lower the, the minimum yes. years of service for eligibility for early retirement. And it does have that effect. Yes. You know, it went from 20 to 15. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the valid report. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. <laughs> yes, it did. It did go down. But she sleeps in these meetings. <laughs> no, she's not awake. Do you think she sleeps? Yeah. So I think we thought, um, or um, there was an indication that there would be a total of four by lowering it, and potentially maybe one or two more. So. Let's start looking. And one, uh, um, we've implemented now our committees. Um, used to meet on separate nights. Now from six to seven, there are committee meetings so that you know the public can attend, and it also gets us, you know, we're we're in the building all together, and probably much more efficient use of everyone's time so that we're not scheduling separate nights. And then at seven, we begin our board meetings. Um, so what committees are you guys on? So I am on visionary and asset management. And I was on policy, but I have stopped. Gabe, <laughs> <laughs> no more policy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good. I think that's, that sounds like things are starting to work together a little bit better there than they had in the past. Or from my perspective, I feel, you know, and I don't have a long history, obviously, mm -hmm. with, with this particular board, but I feel like we are moving in a direction. I think we have a ways to go, but we're taking one step at a time. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that having some of the really tough conversations, you know, are beginning to happen. That um, as a board, we can't be afraid of having those conversations because we do need to do what's right by our communities, our, um, you know, being fiscally responsible, you know, for our children um, coming along in the schools, that we really need to look at the whole picture. And if we don't have hard conversations, then we're not going to pass them on, quite honestly. Yeah, I think it was good having the student members too. Yes, I yeah. yes, I definitely love that. They yeah. when in the old Harwood days, um, they, there were students on the board, and I think they add so much to the flavor of the meeting, mm -hmm. to just the communication between the board and, and students is important. Their voice needs to be heard. Sure, right. definitely. Gabe, okay, your things are going well, right? Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. Good. Any other questions or things that you guys want to share with us? Or you guys have questions? No. So thanks so much, because we really do want to keep the communication open with our town. Oh, the one thing I probably should mention, your idea about um, uh, having a non-instructional day on election day was suggested by the town clerks um, because they want, because voters and, uh, and election officials wanted to be competing for space with students and whatnot, and it's a mess. Um, when you look at the county, you know, just a week and a half before there was a day off the school for in-service, why not have that on election day? Um, so the town clerks wrote a letter to the or the board then asked the superintendent to take that idea to the gathering of superintendents of the district, different districts. Mm -hmm. They sort of do regional calendars, I guess, because they're not, those that are served by a common career technical center, which ours is, um, should not have incompatible calendars. We get a lot of those kids who 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, but I'm told, or I guess these guys were told that meeting will be occurring soon. If you should have an answer, it's such a good idea. I wonder if you don't want to suggest it to the LCT or somebody, um, just to stick it in the state statute. And, and the, mm -hmm. you know, why would you not do that? Um, especially when you've got insert state scattered all over the county. It's such a perfect one to, to do. Um, so maybe I think about going to the LCT with that idea and asking to take it to the legislature um, because it just seems to make common sense. It really does, and from a safety perspective as, as well. And the um, superintendents are meeting on Friday, so Bridget Meese will be bringing it to them, and then uh, should be sending out a letter to the town clerks. But I really like Gabe's idea, potentially bringing it to the legislature. I'm going to ask one more question, just because you know this stuff. Um, back to class size on um, the grade school level. Um, when you go below, stuff I've read, and I don't know as much as you do. Uh, if you go below around 10 or so, depending on the study, they think it's not as good for the kids as mm -hmm. having class sizes around 10. Mm -hmm. uh, is that oversimplified or is that? Um, I'm far from an expert on this subject, but I think there is a lot of merit to the argument that yes, you can have too small a class mm -hmm. um, where the kids really are not enriched by the experience of other exactly. kids. They're mm -hmm. the same four kids have been, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, I think there's a lot of benefit to that, but it's also, um, whether it's generalizable to these little Vermont schools is hard to know. One of the things I think is most special about the way they have run these elementary schools and the way more time elementary school runs is there's a lot of intergrade interaction. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't know anybody a year older than me, and I didn't know anybody a year younger than me until maybe my junior year of high school. Just nobody. Here, you know, they have cross-grade interaction that really is really nice. It gives the, the sixth graders a real responsibility, a sense of responsibility for the school. The kindergartners know the sixth graders' names. Um, you know, and so in that environment, I don't know that a study done in the Chicago public schools, of, uh, you know, can be generalized. Uh, but it's an interesting question. And yeah, at some point, it's not only more expensive, it's not even good for kids yeah. to have a microscopic class. Um, and that there's no question about that. But where the perfect number is, uh, that's yet to be determined. And I think we've always done a good job in this town of the multi-grade education, mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. system. And then if you also take this a step further and look at, high, at the high school and the middle school, there are going to be smaller classrooms in some of those instances. Um, you know, when you think of Latin and some of the other sure. programs. So you will see those, and they're still, the programs are very valuable. Um, but the question about the elementary schools is absolutely a good one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. There's nothing else. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate the. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll yeah. be back as long as there are sun chips. After nine, the beer comes out. <laughs> <laughs> nine? Wait. Well, thank you. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, already 7 20 and we're. But it looks like we've got some time on schedule here. So, Cheryl, what do you have for us here? I remind you to the select board that your select board report, reports for the town report is due to the auditors by January 11th. Yeah, four days. <laughs> <laughs> um, articles are due, they have to be ready, and you have to know what articles you're going to have. Um, so that's why we're kind of pushing you on getting the budget ready. That's by the 17th. The warning has to be done. Um, so, and officer petitions and consent forms are due on January 28th, if any of you plan on running or need to run for office. Sorry, what was the date? 28th. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your consent form. It's the petition and consent form. So I took a training with the Secretary of State about uh, warnings and officers and petitions and they suggested advertising all the open positions. And I see and actually just looking for a more form and Wakefield has now put theirs out twice, but I've never seen any other town do it. 
Is, do you guys want to do that? Is there a reason you don't do that? I think it's probably a good idea. I mean, anyone that's up for re-election, so if like, your seat's up for re-election, it'll be advertised. That's fine. Brad's up for re-election. Sure. Mm -hmm. That would work for you. And vacancies too, right? Yeah, well, of course. But, but if we do it now, well, normally after town meeting, we say we have these ones <laughs> vacant, but if we do it now, we might actually get people to run for the things that are vacant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can try. Yeah, sure. No, I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, I need more people to run. Yeah, I think. Yeah, get, the, get enough petitions, and we won't. I won't put my name. No, no, no. Anything else? That Carol was going to come in tonight. You see that that was postponed until uh, they'll be coming in on the fourth of February. Um, Chris Hunt is working behind the scenes with Deb on her concerns with the easement deed plan as plans as written. Mm -hmm. Her concern is the magnitude um, involving her property, uh, which needs to be worked on. Um, so they're in the process of, uh, Chris is in the process of uh, modifying the plans and getting them approved. So, and he did wasn't able to get that done by tonight. So, um, so after that, after that, we'll have all of the easements ready, and the state will have approved all of the easements, so we can send that out to bid. All right. So that's the last thing. I mean, does any other paperwork? Or... Got to be something, all right? <laughs> so you think that we'll have this out to bid by March first? <laughs> I don't see why not. I, I, I really think we need to push that. I have been. Mm -hmm. I have been to get the, to get the price we need for this job. We need to get it out for good now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this has been three years when we're out. we've been thinking we're going to have it out in January, and it just hasn't happened. Yeah. So. Well, but all. I know. I know it's not. I'm not blaming yeah, anyone. No, no, no. <laughs> but part of that was because the state came mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. at the last, at the eleventh hour, and said. With the drainage, mm -hmm. right. of the no, we're, we're catch basin. Had to wait for the to come mm -hmm. um, Say and, and yeah, uh, to finish the you know, sale and yeah, it's yeah. been all together too long. Yeah, I'm just afraid if we don't get this thing out for bid soon. We're going to be so far over budget that the project won't happen anyways. <laughs> well, it will because it's the state who's holding us up, so I will have to get another amendment. They'll have to give us more money. And I've already talked with them about that, and they said that that won't be a problem because the state is the one who's holding this up. I think I've talked to them. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's good to hear. Okay. Um, Montgomery County Appeal. This right here. Yes. So there needs to be one person who is um, the approved agent to answer those questions. Um, it should be a person who's uh, bonded by our town insurance, which would be, be an officer, which that would be one of you folks or our attorney. Um, and the response to the answers need to be notarized before they can be presented to the court. Now that's quite a, um, that's quite a ball that they laid in a lot there. Yeah. Um, you know, my first reaction when I looked at this is, to what extent if any does sovereign immunity apply? And do you have the option of saying, no, go away? I think anyone, anyone has the right to appeal a decision made at this board. And especially in a right of way when it has to do with roads. And in that case, no, it will not go away. Um, none of the right of ways on here, well, never mind. No. No. What's that? So the only, I think the only thing, I think the only thing that mm -hmm. I think the only thing that the board could do if you wanted this to go away from this particular mm -hmm. appeal 
would be to change your motion, change your decision to, and that would be to leave the access where it was. Mm -hmm. um, leave everything the way it was before. So these guys just, they don't want anything, Montgomery Timber doesn't want anything done. I mean, what, what is their, what are they trying to uh, All they're trying to do is get answers, get the information that we have, that you have asked American Consulting to do. They want the communication from American Consulting to the town. They want the surveys on how we came up with it. When they get all that, they're going to tell you what they want. It looks like what they really want is to continue to use the old right of way. Well, not the old. No, what they think was the old right. right. Yeah, right. right. The historic right. Yeah, that's right. And I, I don't understand why they have. I'm obviously wrong about this, but why they have standing to sue the town when there is no, we're not affecting their property in any way except for access, of which there is no guarantee. It, you know, I understand they're being able to appeal if it was affecting um, right what over their property. Not the case. So. This is even worse, though. This is affecting mm -hmm. them being able to get to their property. So this is There's worse. There's no such guarantee in law. So. Well, I mean, the trail, we're providing a trail. There was a trail there, and there is a trail. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, um, because they don't like the trail? Well, they like the, the, the old uh, access, I guess, because then they had repercussions on what they could do. When now that you've changed mm -hmm. where this goes to over here, you've provided an access for which they can't use, they can't get their equipment in there because um, of the lay of the land is what they're saying. Here, they, ha they had a civil suit where they could probably have um, said, okay, this has been used for over 15 years, we can do it. But by you changing the access, you've taken that away from them. You've taken that. No, 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 they never had it. They, they never had it, so they can't take away what you don't have. <laughs> and and that, that doesn't that's, make sense. No. So I just don't get why we have to do all this stuff. But um, obviously, wrong about it. The attorneys have said something. Has um, Ron looked at this? I would like that. Yeah. Or what is Paul? I mean, what are they? This is not Paul. This well, is Mike I, Tarrant. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Still. And Ron was not at that law firm. Mm -hmm. um, Ron is now. But now you only have a certain amount of time to get this information back. Well, you. we could submit a motion to delay. That's, that's you know, routinely granted. Mm. Because, I mean, how long is it? I mean, there's a lot of stuff yeah. in here. Yeah. I mean, really yeah. Uh, it looks like it's lawyer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, you know what they're, what they're trying to do. I mean, they're yeah. trying to make our lives a hell is what it is. Mm -hmm. Lawyers trying to do. They right. want some sort of agreement that they can't give it. Yeah. So. Um, but I, I think that we should have a motion to delay because it's not enough time for us to respond and ask some questions about if we have any alternatives to respond to this. Yeah, I think Because, yeah, I'm not happy about all this stuff. Yeah. No. Of course not. This is, this is like going through the last eight years all over. Mm -hmm. And there's probably, does the judge or anyone ask them why they didn't participate in the last eight years when there's been mm -hmm. documentation that they had the opportunity mm -hmm. to? Um, that would be a question for mm -hmm. the attorney. Yeah, that's, um, that's... But my guess would be no. Mm -hmm. Because they haven't, all they've done this is ask for information. They haven't really. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think the judge has probably heard much of this right now. He's just granted motions. And I think you're right. So 
So I think I agree with Jason. We should get back to the attorney and just ask for um, a stay. Or, mm -hmm. I don't know how long, but um, until we have an opportunity uh, to yeah. meet with our attorney. Well, also, whatever the attorney thinks is practical. I mean, I, I go for at least a couple of months saying we're in the middle of preparing the budget and you need a town meeting and blah, blah, blah. And it's an undue burden on the town. Right. Um, now, are you thinking wrong, Shams? I, I think that's another discussion we should have. If this is going to be this involved, because we originally thought we were nearly out of it and didn't want to change horses midstream. But at least now, Ron is in the in the same state. Yeah. Yes. Very <laughs> <laughs> well. Yes. That, that goes uh, it's where they have files, mm -hmm. like I just mm -hmm. got together for mm -hmm. who's ever. Yeah, he's yeah. Ron's moved to this group here. Really? Mm -hmm. So, um, and based on the past performance, I'm just comfortable working with Ron. On this yeah, you no, know, I think as well. I think that's the way we should move and okay. ask if that can be possible. Um, so, you know what, why don't I reach out to Ron in the morning? And I'm sure he's a, yeah. or, and let me just see what he says. And then we can mm -hmm. go from there. Yep. And I really would like to push back on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 I think Ron will push back. All right. That is an amazing one. Yeah. It's, it's typical. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheryl, do you have uh, other stuff to talk to us about? On this one? I mean, no, not on that. But anything else? Any other communications or? No, I think you have everything. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah, done with that yet? No. Okay, <laughs> last, two, last thing then. Um, the town hall. In 2019, will, are you continuing with no cost rentals or are we going to start? Um, are we going to start asking um, for the rental fee again? I would rather try to. I don't think we've yeah, we seen any increase in usage due to the no, rentals. Um, that was our hope. No, no. Well, I mean, I think residents could still ask you for mm -hmm. no right. charge. That, that's I mean, always an option. That's it's right. always an option. I mean, and, and you could reduce the fee or excuse them the fee, but mm -hmm. um, so we had fourteen hundred hundred and eighty five dollars in revenue for rentals in 2018, and the custodial cleaning was twelve hundred ninety six. So that doesn't mm -hmm. include the heat or anything right. like that. We'd have that no matter what. Uh, Does that include the chairs? Five hundred of those chairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chair rental. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't free money eventually. That stuff wears. Wears right. So can I have the rental fee schedule? Sorry, I just like moved to the other side. Can't find it. So the residential rate for a four-hour event. Um, on a Saturday or Sunday would be fifty dollars. Uh, Friday through Saturday or um, weekday day is uh, seventy-five dollars. Weekend is seventy-five. Um, That's still pretty cheap. That's extremely cheap. <laughs> uh, one, a whole uh, an event for the whole day at there would be for us for a weekend. It's usually when they do it, you know, on a weekend or something <clears throat> would be a hundred bucks. Um, so you want to start going by these rates again in 19, and then yeah. just anyone who is a resident and they want to come talk to you, I'll make time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's that. mm -hmm. Good. What general mail do we still do to the town? What's that? What general mail do we still do to the town report? Mm -hmm. yeah. report? Yeah. Yeah. And I suggested maybe putting one of these in the mm -hmm. town report mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. I will. And that's why I wanted to get the fee thing straightened out before because town reports are going to close up here in the next couple weeks. Can we have a page in the town report about the town hall? Yeah, I would like to. Do you know anything you want? 
And I forgot to ask Cheryl while she was here, but the stuff that I used in doing the capital report, um, the sooner I can get that stuff, okay. that would be great. Anything else, Cheryl? No. Thanks. Ray, do you have anything to report your communications? No, I was just thinking that I saw an email regard from somebody or somewhere in that organization why asking why they couldn't why they had to submit a like, petition and why they just to be on the ballot. That's in right. the report. That's in here. Yeah. That's in there? Okay. Okay. That was Chris Butch? Yeah. 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 Um, so we will get that. Kelly, anything? John? Sure. Yeah. Um, we had uh, meeting, another meeting with friends of Northfield Mountain, and they'd actually like to schedule a time to come into a meeting, just to kind of explain to the town what, what it's all about and uh, what some of the benefits of the town would be in trying to conserve the, the ridge. And uh, so one of the things that I mentioned was that, that uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make more town more attractive in any way we can. Mm -hmm. And if we can increase recreational op opportunities without any cost to the town, that's, you know, we will all for it. So, so I was hope hopefully the first meeting in February, if we didn't have a full agenda at this point. <clears throat> How much time? 20 minutes? Half an hour? Half an hour? Yeah, that's half an hour. Yeah, do you have contact with those that you'll send me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Got a camera. Well, Karen Moore. Karen Moore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And during any of these meetings, have they considered, like, you just heard the development over that's going on over in um, Galley Breakers, how it's helped the town and right. the school and everything. Right. They're discussing that, too, versus having just, all this land. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, you know, I mean, one of the things that one of the conversations came up is, you know, there there probably could be some lots, you know, right right on Moortown Gap, you know, where, where it is buildable. Yeah. Um, I would think so. And, and um, you know, and that could that could certainly certainly help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so did they did they draft a plan there, John? Or? No, it's not. It's it's not. What they're going to be uh, doing the next meeting, which is the twenty seventh, I guess twenty seventh um, Sunday, ten o'clock. So if you want to, yeah, come up. Yeah, I got the invitation to that one yesterday, but right. I didn't read it till this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not sitting home waiting for an email, you know. Yeah. There's an email on Saturday about me and Sunday. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to email every hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> at any, at any rate, uh, yeah, so at, at that meeting, we're going to you know, be putting some things together. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I have is the, um, the top 20 sites. And, and Cheryl, could you forward that? Whole thing from Pam Deandria. I did. I but, forwarded it to the whole board. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's good. Um, so that so everybody has a report. And, I remember seeing the report. That, that was a few months ago, wasn't it? No, this. Couple uh, last week. This came out. Okay. Yeah, this came out on the eight, 18th okay. of December, I believe. Mm -hmm. So th this is these are the top twenty in, in more okay. top twenty sites, okay? And that and that this is just this is just a little bit just to show you where the sites are, and then the full report is there. Uh, you know, you the cost sites. and everything. Erosion sites. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it came with a map too. I sent no, you a map. Don't talk about email somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it, John? Uh, yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. And then uh, you'll see in the order sheet um, for times in my discussion that Ron Ward died and um, 
so we figured that it would be a good idea to make a donation of his mm -hmm. now to the mayor of our ambulance because he served the town so many capacities. So fifty dollar donation. Very good. Jason? Yeah, okay. nothing for me. All right, so I um a couple things uh from Deb Feldman. Uh since, uh, since I turned in my letter and resigned the position of Lister as of March 5th, uh, the situation has changed and step away, stepping away from the Lister position would leave the town shorthanded. Uh, so she is going to work until the uh, 2019 grand list is lodged. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Okay. So, uh, so, so do we need to retract our acceptance of her resignation? <laughs> I think you probably would just reappoint her. Yeah. yeah, okay. Based on her letter. So should we reappoint on this right here? Yeah. I move to reappoint uh, Deb Feldman until uh, the grand list is lodged. Only 19 grand list is mm -hmm. lodged. Second. Okay. All in favor of what I? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, and then as I guess Ray brought it up, Dr. Butch or, or Chris Butch sent us a letter um, talking about Consolidating, um, I guess, um, signatures for uh, articles. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to bury? That was part of the training I did too. Was mm -hmm. that if people were asking for a donation, if it didn't change, they didn't have to do signatures again. Mm -hmm. They just sent a letter to the select board. If their amount didn't change, a lot of towns do that. It's totally up to the select board to require signatures. And I think the reason that you do if that decision was made like 10, 12 years ago were because there were 20 organizations mm -hmm. wanting this and wanting money. And rather than turn some down and some not down, that by filling out the petition, it let the people of Moortown, you know, do the floor vote, floor vote, let the people of Moortown say yay or nay, or more or less, or I think that's, I think that's why. Well, they still would. They still would have to do still, that. Yeah. They still have yeah. to do that. There still be an article. Yeah, yeah there still be an article. article. Just not. A, they don't yeah. have to require signatures. It's not signatures. a line item. It's just yeah. that they don't have to go around and get signatures. And we've tried that before too, I believe. Um, but I have. I have no problem with that. You know. Well, and I, I'm going to go through this again. But he he cited that they could. That we could vote on it on a town meeting or something. I'd rather, I mean, people want money. If you can't take the time to get signatures, and I'm sorry. I mean, just, you know, I, I haven't really a lot of sympathy or empathy for anyone that doesn't want to take the time to get their signatures. And there's like 20 of them on one petition. So, I mean, if one group takes one sheet and gets, and yeah, it doesn't take mm -hmm. them you know, gets 20 names or signatures on there, then they've got them all anyway. And I explained to Chris mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago when he came in and we talked about it, that they should jump on a petition with these other 20 people, find out who organizes it, get your name on there, and then you wouldn't have to go get 200 right. names or 100. Mm -hmm. You know, you could jump on these positions, petitions, you know, and... Mm -hmm. I know we gave that same advice to mm -hmm. um, the Mad River TV mm -hmm. last year. It's all right. This is the person to actually call. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a different circumstance than what Chris Bush was describing, because that was to for the initial article. Right. What Chris is saying is, once you're on there, if nothing has changed, you can continue without doing a new petition each year, which is different from you want to get on the list, you have to do the petition. Right. Yeah. So, in my mind, this is simplifying the process and not really taking away the content, which is to get on there, you have to do the petition. So I'm comfortable and, with it. And, and we've done well. We've done we've mm -hmm. done that in the past where mm -hmm. they did the petition initially, and then following, they just sent a letter. I think yeah. I think we should get some context. Yes. Oh, oh yes. They have to still request it. Yeah. And also, nothing can change. You can't change the amount. Yeah, you can't that's exactly change. what they're saying. You can't yeah. change anything. So and this was about turning the water very senior citizens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. He was talking about um, the valley. 
Yeah, it was the same. Oh, I mean, was, yeah. yeah, but he just took one specific example. Okay. So really, really, it's a process change, saying this really doesn't help unless something's being changed. And it made sense to me. But I don't know what our past experience was with that. Did it work out? 20 years they've had to fill up petitions since I've been here. Mm -hmm. Because I was auditor before and select board right. clerk too, and they always mm -hmm. filled out yeah. that petition in 20 years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in giving out money to people without a petition. I'm just thinking that an initial petition is sufficient. Well, they've done it every yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying. So what happened when we used to do this? I, don't know. I, I mean, I, I do remember a year or two that once they did it the first time, it was just, just a letter requesting mm -hmm. it. I, I don't remember how far back it was. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess, I don't know, maybe I should be softer on this. It, I mean, they're providing services to our townspeople. It's a good way for get, to get out and see the townspeople if you're asking them. They want to know why. They're not just mm -hmm. finding out about it at town meeting or in the book. Yeah. So they actually see, you see somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, all of that is still true when they first want to get on the list. Yeah, but then I mean, five years ahead. go down yeah. the road, yeah. you're not asking for the same amount of money. The people have changed. If, so you change, if you change the dollar amount, yeah, right? But if you're again. not, right. if you're not, five years later, the town looks mm -hmm. different. I wonder if it would stop some groups from asking for more money. I might like this. I, I think I think the, the time to change the policy is not right now. But maybe we ought to think about it. Oh yeah, 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 not be for this year. Keep it like it is, and you know we can certainly review the whole policy. You can even discuss it at town meeting or other yeah, business. Yeah, discuss it at town meeting. Because we've already got petitions. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so I think we, so. Yeah, we'll take their yeah. letter under advisement and talk about it. Right. And, and I think yeah, that's a good idea to talk about. Yeah. 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 All right. So the other thing I noticed here, Katrina, we have the requests uh, for exterior painting on the mm -hmm. town hall. That's a new one. Uh -huh. And it's very specific in the list of what needs to be done, too. And last year, we just put, you know, basic. This like lists every single part that's not done. How's the price compared to this? Oh, yeah, I just oh, sent it out. No. Yeah. No, so, bid. but wait a second. We had a bid to have the hall yeah. completely done. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it was half last it's year, half. half this year. Right, but we signed a contract. But we, you voided his contract. You voided the contract, mm -hmm. yeah. So has he, has he, did he, did he respond to you no, at all? No, but we sent him a certified letter and he signed for it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we haven't sent that out or done anything. With what? The RFP got posted today. Okay. Because, I mean, he didn't, what was our repercussion on, I mean, we paid him five thousand dollars, right? For half the building, yeah. Right, and we didn't get that work done. You got half, yeah. except for the trim on the front. Was the, what was, and then, yeah, it was. I guess that's what your repercussion is to not do it the next year's contract, right? What? We need. Well, you said, what's our repercussion with it? With him, not with yeah. us. No, I mean, he's the one that owes us. He didn't fulfill his contract. The answer to that. <laughs> he did fulfill his contract, except for a little bit of trim, and then it got Well, that's not fulfilling his contract. <laughs> and I think, and that's why we had asked to have him in here. Um, and we requested him to come twice, and he didn't show up at either meeting. And he signed for the third point. Yes. Yes. And he never came. He never no, was, you said the board said at a meeting. We have no choice but to sever his contract. Right. So we, we should send him a bill for uh, for the work he didn't do. For the work he didn't do. And that we paid him on. So let's figure that out because we've paid him for half the job and he didn't do the half the job except, except, except. Um, and then uh, I think you brought up to me that even the back wall doesn't look like it was. I think I don't think it looks as good as it should. Oh no, right. that's my personal opinion. What was his name again? 
John Gabriel. John. And he had great references too. He did the town hall on Hancock. He did a couple buildings in Waitsfield. So I don't. don't Say his name again. John Wow. Gabriel. Gabriel. Is he from around here? He's from Rochester. He lives up here. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's get this out and see what happens. But in the meantime, let's let's try to figure out what he owes us okay. uh, on that bill. How much trim is this? It's just the uh, front porch. Mm -hmm. um, two windows on the front porch. Two windows door. and a door. Yeah. It's just a green mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. so I, I thought he had done that before. Not quite. I think it was, um, wasn't it a clapboard that was supposed to be taken care of as well? It's not he, on the side that he did. There is. But up on the cupola there, he did Yeah, that. that's the one side he didn't do. The whole side. He didn't like paint any of that side. Right, but. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not defending him either, I'm just saying. No, okay, so. <laughs> what if we send him a bill for $1,000? Certified. Yeah. They say. He owes this for work not complete. Right, mm -hmm. not complete, not paid and not complete. And give your response to that. Yeah, and then we'll send it to the collections. Is the is that an appropriate amount? The amount of work not complete? Do you want to look at that? And I can. Oh, yeah. I probably yeah. Yes, I wasn't. I wasn't where I thought he had done and completed what he was supposed to have done in the first year, mm -hmm. or at least what he was paid well, for. Well, he, yeah. he painted some on the third wall that he wasn't. No, he actually did more than half. Yeah, he did more than half. But technically, the sides that he did, the front trim is not done. He did some of the high stuff because he had the. Like, right. So he did more. Okay. Well, what, what's going to happen? Let me just break it to you here, folks. You're going to get another bid for about 10 grand to have that thing painted. No one's going to come in and paint uh, 10 feet here, 20 feet here, and do a little bit here. It's not how people bid jobs or do jobs. The guy screwed us. He was committed to do a job over a two year period. He was going to pay a certain amount and do it. You even said, or Cheryl said to me, he came in. Uh, asking for money before, oh, yeah. it's uh, before, he, mm -hmm. before he was finished, before he's done. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's not the type of person that we, we should be doing business with. We got screwed. Um, so uh, now we got to deal with it. But you got to come back, and we're going to, we want the whole thing painted when we are doing the budget. We, we better figure for it because it's, it's not coming in at half of what we had. Ridiculous. You should you should charge him the whole five thousand dollars back, really. But you know, for yeah. job not done. But right. so let's um, go ahead and move on. Um, prior to doing any new business, I want to work on the town budget here. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna break. Yeah, please. Short discussion and possibility of some sort of curtains instead of even less, but you never We've got a quote for curtains. We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a quote for blinds? Just blinds. Or shades. And blinds are 4,000. I would um, say it's been two years without them. I say we go another year without them. 
Um, I think we need to keep the sign. The sign's mm -hmm. 2K. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the lines will be a little better. So you're reducing that to 2,000? Yes. Anything else on there, Jason? Uh, whole bunch of little stuff. Um, I was just looking at the actuals for supplies and electricity in town office and just wanted to double check that that $3,000 is realistic. Do you know why these are over? Well, I don't know why the electricity is over. I imagine because it was 90 degrees for mm -hmm. days on end this summer and it was more electricity. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a gamble there. Okay. You think it's reasonable to stick with the 3000 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't know how much time you want me to spend on little stuff. Yeah, but no, go right ahead. We got plenty of time. On, the, on page two of the library, it looks like there's some opportunity to bring things down to the actuals level. In other words, equipment, equipment maintenance can go down to 300. Telephone can go down to 1,100. Um, so my notes are on the older version. So. This latest version has the full year of 2018 on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so telephone can go down to 1,000. Anything on the library? Yeah. Training and mileage can go down to 150. Memberships down to 650. Anybody disagree with this? I'm just bringing down what the actuals are. And seeing that there's an opportunity to trim. Um, I pull supplies down to 400, although they asked, although they asked for 300. But it doesn't 300, I think just keep it there. Just keep it there? Okay. Um, postage, 300. Yep. Uh, electric up to 500. And they asked for 365. Yeah. I don't see any basis for that. Last year's budget was 500, it came in 535. Um, books and periodicals, 2600. Programming expense, 200. What did you put books down to 25? 2600. 26. Let's um, hold up a second. Yeah. Any questions on that or those that Jason has proposed? No, it's, it's not. I mean, we got to. Yeah, I think every. Yeah. We have to mm -hmm. do it. One at a time doesn't sound like much, but when you add them all together, yeah. like that one. Yeah. If you go back to the town hall, you can take out the money for the basement floor. Like three thousand dollars, no expenses. Let's hold off. Come back to the town hall and just. Okay. But that may be because we're not sure what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. It might be a good reason not to do it, just yeah. because there's uncertainty in what might happen and might not happen there. There's no problem um, structurally or... No, it's anything. just a, yeah, it's just a cement matter. floor. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have a question on um, actuals from 2008 on general town expenses. On the select board, we have 3417. Mm -hmm. What was that? Do you know? Yeah, that's all your legal. That's okay, if you look down, you budgeted 5000 for legal. It's right there on the bottom of the thing. 
assessed as it goes by general legal. So that select board tax sales. So the general select legal board is two thousand. The select board is the road, so that's totally mm -hmm. select board. Okay, so if you add those two. If you add the three, well, those three. The three? Three. Yeah. The general legal. Mm -hmm. yeah. The tax sale and the select board. Do a question on, on tax sale and legal expenses. Do we get to take that out of the proceeds? We did. So this is, you'll see it in oh, your. Okay, yeah. okay, so this is a non general fund, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. We still have to put it in the general fund expenses for that. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I'm sorry, but the, the 3417 was our legal? Yeah. So we had legal of 5,500 instead of 5,000, basically. Correct. Mm -hmm. What is HRA again? Health retirement. HRA Health is what we put in into the, that's an expense for the deductibles that you give the employees, which you, offer, which oh, you said okay. they keep the same this year as they did yeah. last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should that be there in the general town expenses? Versus? Yes, it is a general town expense. The insurance cost is in with the employee, but the HRA is a benefit. So this is the, you, so we're giving you, so someone goes to the doctors, they get a receipt for their um, deductible or copay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What's LHMPG? What's that? LHMPG. Oh, those are the new, um, general public uh, permits, general permits that you need for um, road projects. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a local hazard mitigation plan ah, grant. That's a town right. share. Oh, okay, that, that's good. Yeah. I was just going to ask, is that one year? Okay. Right, that does. Yeah. Good. We just got a grant for $7,000, $78,000, so that's a town share. This is this is just pennies, but why are the, are the tax collector? Mm -hmm. Why are the FICA and supplies expenses numbers off from the budget? Well, the, he had a particularly high amount that ran into 2018 from 2017. Uh, you remember okay. that Got deal? It. Got it. Yeah. Sure do. Okay. Yeah. So, so the budget numbers are correct. Yeah. <clears throat> That's where the four dollars came in there mm -hmm. too because one of them was off. Supplies and expenses to 2000 instead of 2800 They only spent 1800 this year. Yep. Is that what you have, Jason? Mm -hmm. Well enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The postage was over because 
because of the mm -hmm. mailings that had to go out for that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we will not have any feet of that. back up to the, the co-pay reimbursement. I mean, uh, I mean the health and the health. Yeah. Sure, right? mm -hmm. Page already. Page up there, right? We're back. I'm back to page three. You know, just, yep. I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> Are we at a point where I, I think this is all right. This is the way I think. I think that this should start becoming a shared um, employee expense rather than 100% town expense. I mean, I, I think that we've been pretty generous as far as insurance and, and pay raises. You know, I think we're, I'm not saying phase it out completely, but I, I think we need to think about that cost as being part of the, old, the employee payment package. Am I right in saying that the state does not reimburse their, the state does not have this available? The state, the state does not, but the deductibles in the state plan are off, awfully low. I don't, I don't think it's directly comparable. Well, I believe that's a question. What is our deductibles? $1,350. Okay. All right. Well, that... That clears it up a little bit for me then. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you, yeah, in all fairness, you already approved that the insurance would stay, that the town would contribute the same this year. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be something that you look at next year mm -hmm. um, sooner than like in October. Right. So that you can change instead of uh, yeah, people I, are already using their. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, yeah. um, the town is paying the same as you did last year when in fact the premiums have gone up too. So the employees are contributing like 7% more this year than what they did last year. The ones who have mm -hmm. a two person plan because they're paying more for their. Mm -hmm. okay. So the town is not paying, in other words, the town is not paying 100%. You're paying thirteen hundred dollars for, and, and the deductible is thirteen fifty. So because it went up fifty dollars this year, and then the premiums went up, I think one hundred and twenty-five dollars or something, and the town is not covering that one hundred and twenty-five at all. Mm -hmm. So the town is not paying one hundred percent this year. So I would say that would make sense to look at when we find out what the rates are for next yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. And this could yeah. be part of that package. I think the whole health insurance needs to be looked at. I mean, every year. Every year. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the way it's changing the cost, and, mm -hmm. and obviously what it's, it's costing us. And I think expectations are are, are changing, and you know. Um, okay, I'm, I'm good but, with that. I'm just the trouble is, they come out like in December, end of November or something. They mm -hmm. raise, so you really got to be on the ball. At that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, we should, I, we need to do a better job of pushing them and getting the rates earlier. I guess I mean they, they got to have to do a thing before December, but yeah, forty five days. That's supposed to happen. Uh, yeah. Forty five days from when? So it'd be mid November. So it should be mid November. Yeah. By the end of the year. So oh, forty five days. days. And I don't think we're getting them until like the first week in December or something. Okay, so I'm going back to page five now. Yeah, I'm kind of really got some of it. Katrina, yes. I'm sorry, when you guys were, when you're change, making the changes, do you have the ability to, are you adding and subtracting so you know? Each section auto some. Oh, as we're doing it tonight? Yeah. 
We could have the ability. Uh, or like you said, grab the, grab the computer and just auto just yeah yeah, yeah you, you can do that. Grab your computer so you. That's a good idea. Yeah, because it would be wonderful. Otherwise, you're gonna have to have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a dumb question on cemeteries. Given how much money they have, why do we pay for cleaning stones? Do you think that what the money's for? I think we talked about it two years ago, <laughs> and then we haven't done anything. But. Mm -hmm. I think a couple of years ago the actuals was zero, so we didn't do it. Yeah. I missed the first part of that. Oh, sorry, cemeteries. Yeah. Um, why are we paying out of the general fund for cleaning stones? They have plenty of money for that. I don't want to discourage them from cleaning stones, but I don't see what comes out of general budget at all. That's kind of what your money is for. Exactly. Yeah. Let's 86 that. Yep. All right, so it's on. So let's go on 2000. Do you need to catch up? To catch up, yeah. yeah. Page seven, and I have there is a really complicated question. I hope someone has a simple way of looking at it. Okay. Um, given the unknowns regarding staffing for the upcoming year, mm -hmm. do we need a big chunk of money in select board discretionary pay to deal with whatever happens? Okay. <coughs> then, how do we go with that? This is an interesting. I, of course, one of the things that John and I were talking about, or actually that was one of the bigger things is how we deal with that. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But if we want to be able to act on what we don't know now, we may need a pot of money. Yeah. And that pot of money would have to come at least in part from um, some of the existing ones. All right, well, we know, we know six months. Right. What, so we don't have. Yep. Basically, so then we're working off just on a half mm -hmm. basis on that. Um, and John and I, when we were, we were talking about this, mm -hmm. um, our, we just don't know right. what we need. I mean, yeah. that's the right. problem. Yeah, we don't I'm need. talking about mechanism now because obviously we don't know. Right. So we can reduce the I'm loans sorry, for, for yeah, the suspenses. Um, yeah. The discretionary thing. If we reduce the time assistant no, number from to the six month number. And put the balance in the discretionary uh -huh. plus some amount that we feel we may need to get things to balance out. Mm -hmm. That's one way to build that. Okay. Another way would be to have under the um, assistant the um, six months. 
plus the minimum amount that we're certain we'll be paying somebody, and then the balance in the discretionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I, I think I like the first of just yep. six months and then just so it's clean. So you that's easier to describe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, that would be my first choice as well. And and then that going forward. Because that's the big question, what do we want to do? Uh, what we want to do will depend on what is available to us, so we can possibly know. And we may not want to put anything extra in the discretionary either. That's a possibility. Um, I mean, the main reason we had that was because we had experience, you know. Right. And we may end up, let's say that the person currently running in Burlington has moved to more town and would like to run more town instead. Mm -hmm. it, it could happen. Yeah, right. Did you get all caught up, Katrina? Yes, I'm caught up. You said something about cemeteries when I started. Yeah. So. The $800 for cleaning stones. Nothing. Gone. Yeah. Well, so I am going to have to... This only subtotals each section, so when we're done, I still have to add. 800 is gone? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm caught up. Uh, do you want to do subtotals in Excel? Yeah, I do subtotals. But I, I put in. No, because I put in. This is fire department yeah. subtotal. Yeah. In, there's yeah. subtotals throughout it yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that don't add. No. <laughs> Yes, I know how to do it. It doesn't happen in the budget. What is proposed? Or is that supposed to be proposed? Proposed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where? It says, it says Katrina, $19, 40 hours. That's what, that was what was proposed to you like three months ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are those numbers, so. Right? Is that what you put in there? No, that's what I was no. going to talk to him about last time, mm -hmm. but Tom wasn't here. All right, so why don't you go ahead and talk to us about it now? Sure. That's all on page six, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Six. Bottom of six. Bottom of six. So I, um, since November, I guess, since we started talking about this, um, stuff has changed in my life, too, and I want to be considered for Cheryl's position for full time, is what I'm requesting. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, do you want me to give you the whole spiel right now, or, or just? No, I think that's the I mean, good <laughs> okay. 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 No. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, how does what you wrote there affect the numbers? They're almost exactly the same as this year's. Actually, they're a little bit less than this year's. Just one thing on your, your color coding. When you're doing, you should do your, I think you should do your uh, less, your, your colors backwards, different. When I see a red, I think of, um, of a de deficit. It is, that's a negative. When they're red, they go down. We requested. Um, Which one are you Yeah, red is, when it goes down, I would want black. Personally. Oh, you want it to, I got you. Okay. So that way I'm looking at, because right. I was looking at, I look at red as bad. Okay, I got you, I got you. Not, so you're sweet. running in the red. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sort of like, um, <laughs> so I, at first I was looking, oh, we're looking good, man. Then I see just a little bit of red. I said, wait a second. You start looking at the numbers and it's like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Ray, it looks like there's a 1,069 difference uh, down. Yeah, they won't cap. Um, but uh, does that mean we want to? Uh, so can I ask you this? If your if your goal or your plan is or your thoughts are that you want to level fund whoever takes over or whatever, then why can't you just level fund this budget? the way it is, and then you've got the number, and then you can 
I think if it passes that way, we have some obligation to actually pay it. Um, I can't don't think so. Only that. an officer. Uh, an okay. officer. Okay. So you can't change your select board pay. You can't change chairman's pay once you say it. Once you put it in there, being an employee. Mm -hmm. Of course, if they don't work as many hours, and you don't have to pay them that. Oh, that sounds like we know the answer to your question that came up earlier. Um, if someone in the end gets Gerald, are we obligated to pay that person the same as we Yes. Have? What was budgeted, because it's an officer position, is what that person okay. would get. Unless they agree, as Sherilyn did, right. not to take as much. Okay. So can we do something like to split what we're paying Cheryl into two lines, where she has a base salary and a qualifications bonus, so that if someone less qualified ends up in that job, we don't have we to can, pay it? We can do it, yeah, as long as we do it beforehand. I mean, I assume we can pay it however we want to pay it. Yeah, but, yes. but it has to be in two lines for us to do that, or else we are stuck having to pay that amount to whoever. It's, if it's treasurer and it says treasurer pay, that's what that person's going to get. Okay, so we do need to split that into right. two, two lines. See, it says select board pay. Yeah. Yeah, and yes. it's she did just get last year, though. Yes. Yes. And it says yes. town treasurer. Oh, okay. So yeah. 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 But in the future, that's yeah. something we should yeah. think about. Because yeah. She got reelected last year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But as I was saying earlier, she mm -hmm. may start seeing competition because she's getting the pay going up and the benefits, there might be more people looking. Yeah. So it's something we want mm -hmm. to take a look at. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily want to pay just anybody. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. But you see it here, it says town administrator, yeah. it doesn't say town administrator pay, it says uh -huh. town administrator, that's what's budgeted. Right, well I think more so that we can... So that's, I mean, it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. um, we can pay, you know, I guess what we want as long as it's under the statute, but whether it's just town administrator, town administrator pay. Yep. A judge will look at it as the same thing. Because so it's, it's like for the officers, maybe we do want that second line. Yeah. You know, if you just want, as a reminder, if you want to set it up that way, you could or do it in the future. So, but, mm -hmm. so the question, and Cheryl mentioned it, if we want to level fund this, but I'd like to actually save some money here if we mm -hmm. could. Now, Joe was just saying if it's in this line, you don't actually have to pay it. Okay. But it is. True. Yeah. We just talked about that. Yeah. But, but you're still budgeting it mm -hmm. for it, and you're still asking the voters, the voters for the money. Right. right. And if we had a lower number here, and that, and the difference in the discretionary, same thing, it just might be easier to describe. Right. And we, we don't have to, like, say, so you don't have to use it, but it, it never was usually it's used. Yep. Did you have a, a total force between us? Did you? Uh, no, I didn't know if we were done <laughs> going through. Just we were going to go back to the town hall, right, Tom? Yeah, I think, that's, I think that was a good idea, Katrina, to take out the form. Yeah, it's not going to hurt it to sit for another year. In fact, no. it might actually help the concrete to finish breathing or whatever it does. <laughs> so it was 3000 out of that. And the rest was for the paint. All right, well, <laughs> hopefully we can do it. And I don't mean to be... I'm no, not, I totally get it, what you're saying, yeah. Our frustration, not with you, Fo, or yeah. it's just... I it hate, is frustrating. hate getting screwed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So take that down to 4,000? No. No, it's got to be 5,000. Or 5,000, I mean, sorry. 5,500, five, put it 5,500. Five, I'll call my the guy that painted my house, Samir. No. Oh. Well, I mean, last year we only got two bids on it anyway. Mm -hmm. And the other one was like 13000 total, not ten. I have a pretty good sized house. Yeah. He scraped mine, crammed it, two coats of paint, 2500 bucks. He can come work for me. <laughs> That's <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That's good. He's a yeah. Bosnian guy I met years ago. And he paints, and he just... Oh he is, and he's well, a good painter too. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, 
go fool around. I mean, he's one of the better painters I've seen. And I was like, is this all? And he, he just does the work. We'll say it'll take two weeks. He comes in and does it like seven days straight. He works every day. And as long as he has your permission, you don't walk around during the week and you don't. You're fast. Uh, I just printed it, yeah. Every time he comes, I get a job somewhere else. Like this time, readers here, and then I go to this huge house and face it. Because every he he doesn't care what heights are and things like that. And he, so would he be interested in doing the town hall? Yeah, I'll give him a call. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are intimidated mm -hmm. when towns are hired, and I think they don't bid on things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's why we don't get that many bids on yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. See. Cheryl's, or Cheryl, sorry, is adding it up. She's faster on the calculator. Um, okay, I started bringing this up before. I didn't detect a whole lot of enthusiasm, but may as well see what people say. Uh, we've got a 2% raise here. <coughs> right. The state is doing 1.35%. Comments? I've done research on this as well. I have talked to the LCT. Let's, um, so if you've done... Research. Mm -hmm. Let's hear your okay. research, not your opinion, your research. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up the email right now. <laughs> because I was, I wanted to know how people got the cost of living. Like, what did they go by? So I asked her what other towns do and what they do. So um, she said, I just want to know how we typically do it. Um, but they go, <laughs> they go um, by... Sorry, the Consumer Price Index from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So that's what they go by, and they and they do it for June of every year because it changes every month. Mm -hmm. So every year they look at June, that's what it is. And they've done that, she said, for as long as she can remember. So that's 2.6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much is the Social Security last year? 2.6. Social Security is 2.6. I, I have a printout. I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't get it, Ray, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Social Security said 2.6, I printed it out. That's leaving out the four years before where it didn't go up. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. You know, so. Well, I can see what it was last year. Okay. You can check the last two years. If that's yeah. Right. The last two years. I'd like to keep that 2% personally. But mm -hmm. As we were talking about earlier, I think we got to look at the whole package and if leave it at two percent mm -hmm. you know we'll talk about the insurance and everything all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I, I as a state employee I could certainly say that one point three five percent felt rather chintzy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't really feel anything, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think a lot of people would rather have see the insurance paid mm -hmm. than see a one yeah. percent increase or mm -hmm. last year it was one point five. And we got two. So this year it's 2.6. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what you did the years before that, what the rate was. So the, 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 the average. What was CPI the year before that? Two. Point two. seven. Yeah. yeah, point two, zero, point three. Yeah. Started going back up 2017. Mm -hmm. So just if, when you want to look at it next year, then you have a base to look at. That's what VLCT uses. Because until this year, we've been using what the state does. And she said the problem with that is sometimes you guys haven't figured out your budget yet. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's what she advises. Yeah. The state does it on a two-year cycle. Yeah. So, yeah, half the time. <laughs> What I was saying is because I do, so I do a subtotal for each of these, mm -hmm. and then I do the whole fire and the whole highway. Mm -hmm. you, can do sub -sub you can do as many levels of that as you want. Yeah, but, at the end. Okay, so what, with what you changed, and I added in fifteen thousand um, dollars, sounds like you're going to go with a pickup. So that would be a debt retirement on pickup. Yeah, right. you know what? Yeah. Oh, but that's we can't figure that's that in the budget. budget. In the budget. Yeah, you do. You have to figure this one payment. You have to make a payment in 2019. Well, we don't know that we're not going to make payment because it's an article. Okay. But mm -hmm. so that gets added on after. No, it can't get added on after. If you yeah, have to make a payment in 19, 
Included you have to put it in the budget. Well, we put it in the article. Put it in the article. Does the payment be in 2020? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not going the article passes or it doesn't. So, the, uh, so then you won't be getting your pickup until 2001. Right? No, no, no. Mm. Okay, whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 No, no, the Washington County Youth Services. It's, a, it's an article. But after, after it's voted in, it's added to the actual, and then that's when, we're, when we it's figure out our tax rate. rate. It's there, but we don't figure it beforehand into our, or at least I don't believe we ever have. No. Where do I you put, if you plan on making a payment this year, and you know you're going to do it, you don't that because you don't know how you're going to do it. You don't know how the how much it's going to be, is what I'm saying. And so then when you do your tax rate, you're going to add it on. So then when you make the payment, if you don't put it in there, then you're going to have to add whatever the payment is when you do your tax rate because you yes, can't exactly. it. Yes, exactly. So it so it. So it. Well, I guess you can do it that way, but it's pretty unsure of what. Yeah. Um, so wait, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm slightly behind you. What's the sixteen thousand dollars? Fifteen thousand dollars would be for a payment. For but that's not what we want to do. I think that's what we did last year. Because I remember payment, when right, we were doing tax rate. Okay, payment. that's the payment on the new tax. Right. So we should, again, if it passes. And yes. Then it goes. No, no, no. I, I got it. Okay, so it's one two zero one million two hundred and six thousand two fifteen. 206. 206. Okay. Yeah. 1206, you didn't finish. 215, we didn't hear you. Sorry. 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 Two one five. Yes. Two one five. <laughs> okay. That's twenty one thousand lower, right? So we went through here. I didn't mm -hmm. think we came up with that money. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, we had a couple bigger ones, five and six. Are you looking on last week's sheet, um, John? Oh, today's sheet. No, today's today's sheet was one million two twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. Well, there's. Three thousand on the first page. So we got another four percent to go, gentlemen and ladies, and then we'll be all set. <laughs> this town equipment is killing us. Yeah, it's killing us. You don't have a piece of equipment down there that the town can use for a year or two, right? You know, at, <laughs> at some point, it becomes, and I think you're going to see it, where you're going to be subcontracting a lot of this stuff out. Big contractors that have this equipment. It can spread out these costs more to different towns, you know. I mean, yeah, I, don't, I mean, you need you need a grader. I mean, every town yeah, needs every a town grader. needs a grader, 
and you're going to need a loader. The excavator is where you could probably. The excavator in your crew side. Well, you never got as far as the fire station. Nothing there. Um, the dispatching service is kind of, but I mean, we went from 2,000 to 5,000 um, because the clutch was 2,600. Well, what's he going to do with the other 2,000? Where are you? And then we're not even sure that it needs a clutch mm -hmm. because it's, um, yeah, and that was, I, I wasn't really impressed with that presentation of that discussion on that as far as it came from Jordy who would be doing the repair and they're not sure. So we can put that in the twenty five hundred bucks. Lowering that down to twenty five. Mm-hmm. Once we have any fight here. <laughs> I don't see it. Um, what do you think, Kelly? Mm -hmm. The, uh, well, the, yeah, the maintenance and repairs on the... So, Jordy does all the maintenance. He's the tech. He works yeah. with a guy who does it. I would say if Jordy said he needs a clutch, he needs a clutch. All right, but, that, but he didn't... He said he needed a clutch. Stetson did not um, explain it well. He looks at it more than once, right. from what I got. Stefan didn't explain it well. So does he know or not? Whether it's, and, you, and you're pretty sure that it does? So basically, it's loose. He tightened it as much as he could tighten it. Mm -hmm. So the next time around, it's not going to, it's going to need to be replaced. That clutch could go at any time. So is there any reason not to bring that down to four thousand dollars instead of five? Because the clutch is twenty six and then another fourteen hundred. Probably could work yeah. with that. Yeah. So four thousand. Four thousand. Thank you, Kelly. That's good. So yeah, I know if you know that. That's why I asked you. That. I mean, but if because you if you know that. He doesn't explain things very well sometimes. I think he kind of sits there and gets in the hot seat and. Well, it shouldn't be a hot seat. We're just trying to figure out. Tell us what kinds of experience. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And on the fire warden, we're doubling that pay. But we just got books for him to fill out and find out exactly how many permits and things and how many places he's going. I'm wondering if you should wait another year before doubling the salary of the fire warden. Yeah, I think it's probably a good idea. Let's get a track record of what's going on. Yeah, I just gave them those carbon copy nice. things in a little book, so you should be able to see it anytime. Are they expecting a building pay? Hey, what's the communication? That's, that's, that's the fun. He came in and said that he's going to a lot of places, but so uh, my, now he has um, a log to record where he's going okay. to fill out the things, yeah. and then if he is, then. see what happens. So drop that to 250. Right. Because what? So um, that's just more of a stipend on a 250. It's not per yeah. visit or anything like that. That's right? just a stipend. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So double it before you know what's going on. Catch. I know we talked about this before. Why are we eliminating the stipend for the fire department? Because they. Was it being used for its intended purpose? Um, we had intended for it to be a few years ago when Steve was talking. They were um, for expenses, you know, fifty bucks the gas or whatever right. they whatever they're doing. So we allocated the money, uh, which had previously been allocated, but the, the town took it back because we paid the insurance. Okay, um, but. A few years ago, it was my idea to give them the stipend. I just these guys are running there doing everything. Right. You know, they're probably going to get the most. But um, we were told that it doesn't. They get it, and then they just vote not to take the money and put it into something else, okay. uh, a piece of equipment, which I think is valiant. But 
is intended, it was intended for their pockets, their money, that's right. what the money is. We have the maintenance and the other things, so um, that was okay. How that came up. Right. And I, I talked to Stefan about it, we had it's probably six weeks ago, whenever we went over the budget, and I thought we had a good discussion about it. And, he was going to go on and he accepted it. He was going to talk to his people and he told me that they would be fine. So I don't okay. any difference. I think another thing that they were going to talk about with that was potentially from this year if they put it in there again was to say this is where it's going. Right. And so, like, you guys are just going to take the money, and if you decide to pull your money together for jackets, then that's fine. But that they were going to. Right. Yeah, I was going to do a of every call and then put a money value to it, mm -hmm. like other towns did. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's what I talked to Seth mm -hmm. about. So, you know, can you figure out something? Because we need them, we want them, they're valuable, and they shouldn't have to, it shouldn't cost them. Mm -hmm. to volunteer to do this and that was the whole yeah. idea mm -hmm. about trying to get them some money and uh, then it didn't seem like they cared about it so it was like mm -hmm. I don't know, but. so Cheryl how many hours um, you're working now 30. 30, and then you're working 10? At least. So there's 40. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, you can see I went over my budget, but a lot of it was training. I went to a lot of trainings this year, for, like outside trainings. That's 40 hours a week there. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at here is 50 hours a week. Um, and I don't know if that's something that, that we can do. Um, I mean, I'd be more comfortable a total of 40 hours, 30 hours, or 10 hours at 26. And um, like 30 hours at the 19 to, to put in the budget. Because I don't know if, we're, if we need to, to up another 10 hours of, of administrative work. I think we should keep the same level as we are right now, 40 hours. We're not, not going up to 50 hours. I agree. I didn't realize that earlier. Okay. We were talking about that, but yeah, I agree. In that way, um, it, it, it gives us the money in there to do, to make the decisions that we need to make. Mm -hmm. um, but it's saving us, uh, what? What's 30 what hours? Is? Say, um, keep Cheryl's line as it is, but your line just. Uh, 19 times 30. Makes it 
That's that's like fifty percent off. Three. Oh. Two more. Um, you're trying to figure out the full year value of thirty hours. Thirty hours times nineteen. That's two thousand. Yeah. Three quarters times twenty eight times nineteen. Thirty hours times nineteen times thirty times fifty-two. Here, thirty-one is twenty-nine thousand. <laughs> Just twenty-nine. Yeah, twenty-nine six forty. Twenty-nine six forty. That's what I think. Yeah. So that's saving us almost ten grand then. Mm -hmm. Nine thousand nine hundred and. What's the What's the previous number? <laughs> I knew that was doing in my head. So call ten grand. Twenty one six forty. Yeah. Nine thousand eight hundred and dollars. Now is that what you want is that the rate at which you want to budget for the second half of the year? No, I think you're short I think there. it keeps us safe. But I'm going to well, be here perhaps. Yeah, for half. Yeah, the first six months will be for sure. Right. So we're, we're we're not doing anything different. Oh shh. But yeah. but your hours are different. Yeah. 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 I think you have to do each half of the year separate. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it that way then. Um, We don't need to bring a real calculator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's 780 hours. 26 dollars times 780 is for me to work half a year mm -hmm. at 30. Last time. <laughs> Give me my big decimal cup. Uh, no. I hate trying to use this thing. What yeah. is it? How many hours? Uh, I don't know. How many hours? 26, 26 hours times what? Times 780. It's 20,280. So it's $20,280 is what you're going to pay me between January, and then 19 hours, $19 times 780, which is for the other half, is what? Well, she won't begin 19. She's doing the second half. She's doing, oh, she's doing the second, second half. Okay. It's 14,820. So together, so that's 34, 35, 0, 35, 100 is what town administrator line should be. So you're only saving 4,000. It was between 39, 520. But you can take, oh. Now we're in the second line, what happens? So that line is going to be 35, one hundred. <clears throat> Okay, so then that's 10 hours. You know, and you know, I don't have to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I was, you don't have to keep me on as grant manager. I mean, well, I'm okay with that. Because you haven't really told me whether you want me to do that or not. I don't think we will figure that out. <laughs> but that's, that's why it's safe if we, yes. if we have yeah. this. Yeah. So um, we're 10 hours a week times 20 times 13 weeks. Times 13 weeks. 130 hours times 26. 130 hours times 26. So that's 3380. And then half my year? $3,380. Yeah. Okay. So then half my year. You'll be right back because then we'll be right back because then we'll be pretty quick. Yeah, you will be. What's 15? But how can you cut no. 10 hours for half a year? No, we cut, it would be 10 hours for half the year. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what we just said, 3380. Okay. Now we have to do so my half. So those, oh, I thought you said that you added 33. No, 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 that's your half. No. I have to be back here for this 4420. Okay. 
to put in that line. 19. Okay. okay. So 16. Okay. So I'll So plus 6360, which is no, me not for six time. weeks, not oh, 26 right. weeks, only half a year. 13 weeks. What? What? No, it's no, 20, 26, 26 weeks. weeks. We can the pay periods. I did weeks, not pay periods. <coughs> I did by the hour. Okay, so what's the first part? What's the total? I'm not sure you're going to. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's not right. Let's see. 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 Sixteen thirty-one times fifteen hours a week mm -hmm. times twenty-six weeks, six thousand three hundred sixty-one dollars. So it's a total plus thirty-three eighty, which is what you get for half the year. But that's so, not what you get for half the year. Calculate that over again, because I think that you pay periods instead of weeks. No, I, okay. Ten hours a week times twenty-six weeks times twenty-six dollars. Yep. It's 6760. So 6760 plus 6360. So the second line is 13. It's almost the same. 13,120. <laughs> so basically we're saying 4,500 bucks. Yeah. Well, keep in mind that the, the, the FICO will be lowered on that as well. Um, Plus. And then, what about the, the health insurance? Uh, what numbers figure into that? That's for the whole year. Okay, for, for, for whom? Well, for, for whoever you hire, do you mind and half a mind? Mm -hmm. For a full time person. Not a salary dependent number. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to change. I assume whoever you hire for 30 weeks is going to get insurance, so. So, what are we subtracting? Hey, Cheryl, you want to work 10 hours a week. To maintain the insurance benefit, what, what is the Nothing. purpose there? Just, just to do. Something. I was going to do the grant stuff, but I don't have to. I mean, we're minusing four thousand eight hundred twenty dollars. After all that, that's the difference. someone with that experience, then they should be able to do the grant stuff and we're not um, having Cheryl do that. So you go, so the total of the two. 
So we've got that these 10 hours as well. So you don't, you don't hunt anymore. For the second half of the year for this calculation, did we do? We did Cheryl at 10 hours. And how many hours for you? 15. At 16.31, which is what I'm making now. No, 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 for the second half of the year. The second half of the year, you did Cheryl at 10 hours a week, $26 an hour. Right, and you for? As town administrator. Right. 30 hours. 30 hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of should give you enough in case you hire. Enough, and just have one enough hours, you just short it, say seven hours and a half for that. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. You know, we were going to end the evening with the town administrator position discussion, presumably in the executive session. Um, I think it makes sense to meet one more time. Okay. Rather than trying to wrap things up tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, how is everyone's availability next Monday? I'm pretty sure that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, I'll change the camera. I don't get anything on Monday, so I'm not going to My kids are all gone, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. Yeah. Um, all right, so why don't we plan on coming back, finishing up the budget. Um, Sound good at six, and then about, let's um, let's move into executive session to discuss the town a minute where we can finish the business first. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But let's make sure we do some of that yeah. tonight as well because we have. It's, uh, I think that's a good idea, John. And we'll also give everyone another week to put their eyes on the budget again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ask any other questions to. You know, There's some possibility. If my office actually comes up with budget targets, that I might not be able to do the next Monday. But you know, we can live with that, I think. All right. We'll find out and then, but we'll have an idea where we're at right. after discussions right. and then I can get your input and uh, we can go from there. Right. Um, because I, the rest of the week, I'm actually. Sorry. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and move into um, new business. Or is there any other old business that people like to pick up prior to new business? No. Any new business? Uh, just on old business or new business, whatever. Did you get a uh, report from the state police on the person that they found that up there on the mm -hmm. the no. cause? They haven't said oh. no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so... I think she went up there, got lost, drove up to where the ta the electrical boxes are. Yeah. Her car got stuck. Right. And she started walking back down. And I don't know if she tripped and fell and just froze because it was during one of those cold nights. Oh, so she was walking back. She was walking back right toward the last camp. Yeah, she was walking back toward the last camp. Did she know what, what she was she doing? And she left. Just, I mean, got you know, the GPS, or the GPS will send you up there. So, okay. And then I don't know if maybe. It's just, it's funny, you know, I think that happens oh, more often. So when I was talking to my brother that day, I saw him. He says, Oh, I saw him. And he's in the police. And I said, Well, you look into that? What's happened? And he, he says, Well, there's nothing now, but he told me exactly what it'll be. He says, You know what? This happens all the time. She got lost. The, do an autopsy, she froze to death, and the GPS center, he says, we have so much of that happens, and mm -hmm. it's not foul play, it is, yeah. unfortunately, a very unfortunate thing happened. But, GPS sends a lot of people on the old snowmobile trails. And Do they know how long she was out there? I think the latest, yeah. last report said up to two days. Yeah. At least 24 mm -hmm. hours up to two days. I think they saw her go up maybe like Sunday or Monday. I just oh. GPS the location in Waterbury and it was a road that got washed out in the rain and it still took me that way. <laughs> well, it's, it's very unfortunate. Yeah. It's sad, actually. Anyways, um, so we do have some things to sign for. One other thing I was going to mention John and I came in to sign 
It was the um, the TAM. Um, so if everyone would like to take an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and Ray came in. John was there. Um, Do you need a signature or just reading this? Uh, go ahead and sign it. But, so what we want to do as an article, we want to fix that mm -hmm. this year so that doesn't come right. out, so that we can borrow the money from June and from January through to... I understand he's already working on right. for that. She is? Okay. Yeah. But there's uh, payroll, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one other thing. Uh, about. Mm -hmm. you know, okay, it's probably just too late for me to be thinking about this. But why do we need to do tax anticipation notes instead of using what we have? Because with our article, and that's why I mentioned that we need to change the article, because the article did not yeah. state, anyways, it, to the end of this year. Not that we could start it again next year, so we need to. Yeah. Just clarify. Town meeting to town meeting. Right. <laughs> yeah. Instead of you. We can, we can prepay this with no. Yeah. We have a little bit of interest, but. Mm, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that's fair. We have the money. From January until. Mm -hmm. Job ready. Calvin. Yeah. Too much curb cuts there, too. Ah, okay. Thank okay. you. Curb cuts. And just make everyone aware, and John okayed this, which uh, it was just the listers, um, the board of listers request approval to make the following changes to the 2018 grant list under errors and omissions in our part of two. Mm -hmm. um, David Demingware, and actually they're both under his name, so. Mm -hmm. I said this last time, but I wish they would say from two. I don't know what they're doing. That's why I was just looking to see if we do a big one here. Mm -hmm. Can we request that? Yeah. Yeah. I should have. I think you said that last time. <laughs> Did you go? Uh, Thank you. Nope. <laughs> So there's the original behind it, so you can read it, staple to it. But that one has marked signatures. This, um, I've not seen this. Cut for South Hill, 1277 South Hill. Straight below me. Our logging is crazy. Did, um, now going up the hill, is it to the right or the left? Left. left. Yep. Yeah, they have from almost Patty Hill to just before my house cleared. Really? A huge, and within like three days they did this. They have a ton of equipment out there. Yeah. yeah My did. dog's going crazy. Here's <laughs> <Yours is. laughs> it. Right. Does this need all our signatures? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, I just pass on those. People can take all of them. Here's another one for gallery anchors. Mm Who's -hmm. this one? Yeah, this should have all your signatures on it. Oh, yeah, there is one. Yeah. There, there is. Yeah. I think I'm going to Yeah. Hello. Oh, they have overloads. Overload. Oh, the overload is just you. Those ones do me all again. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Thank you. I have absolutely no idea where this one is. What, well, it's what is this? 17, this is the original. You can read it there. It's 1721. It's right below my house. Just above Patty Hill. The guy owns like 115 acres. Alright. And he's 
just locking that open. Is there any, um, are we sure that's enough for this is money? Martin thinks it is. I talked with Martin and he thinks it is, so I'll try it for this year. Um, I'm sorry, what was that number again? Uh, increase the MOU to 12,000. From, from 10,000 to 12,000. And that was based on uh, Martin's with Cheryl working with him. As far as real cost, now we've had a little bit of history of what's what's going on here and how much um, they're putting into it. And also, if you take a look at the parking lot, it's, it's primarily primarily used by the school. Yeah, I, I, that doesn't sound like enough to me, but that's that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be half of the maintenance, not the whole thing. Right. right. So we're actually saying that it costs twenty four thousand for it and the schools paid half, so that's does everyone I guess we're comfortable with that then? And you sent this to Ray Dagle? Or is I will. I already told him to please put twelve thousand on the budget instead of ten. Right. And what was his comments to you? Did he have any? Um he said he'll take it to Michelle Baker. Okay. I thought there was Somebody, uh, not his. Yeah, so there was. But. Um, Is that when you got the English for the movie? It's the same time as when. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. So I will, um, a couple things on my agenda, people I need to call, so I will um, hold me to it, let me write it down. You can go ahead and take a look at that, Jason. Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm calling Ron Chen in the morning um, to discuss the lawsuit and the principal over here, which I tried today, but that was, it was a little bit of a um, yeah, I she was. <laughs> I know a car. <laughs> um, so we'll take care of that. And I guess if there's nothing, nothing else. Minutes. Oh, yeah. You can go ahead and approve the minutes. Right. I move to approve the minutes of 1217. Second, Kelly, any further discussion? All in favor, put aye. 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 Motion to dismiss. Adjourned? Adjourned. <laughs> that was only in the executive session. Yeah, we are. After, yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, we can't right. go to accepting Jeez. session. <laughs> Get out of here. For the same reason as, right? Yeah. Or does that fall under number three and four, too? <clears throat> the appointment or employment or evaluation of public officer or employee. Provided that the public body shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public officer or employee in an open meeting and shall explain the reasons for its final decision during the open meeting. So that Thank you, John, technically you need to make a motion on why you need to go into executive session if you're reading that. <laughs> and right. then you need to make a motion to go into executive session. <laughs> All right, so that was the reason. So the reason, yeah, that's the reason, number one. That's right? the reason. Yeah. And 
All I have to do is make a specific finding. Yeah, yeah, because That's it all. can't be discussed in an open meeting because you're discussing payroll. So you find the need to go through executive session. Okay. Okay. Yes. I got that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.